Today is the third Sunday of the blessed month, Tuba. And you know we celebrated the Theophany feast a few days ago. So most of the readings of this month about baptism. And baptism in the original Greek word means dye, new color. And we got new life with baptism. We died with the Lord and we resurrected with him in the baptism and became a new creation. So, so new birth, new color, new life. And the baptizer, St. John, is the role model for us today. He was a great teacher. He was the most knowledgeable person in his time. But he was very humble, very humble. Because he was not just having some information, some knowledge, but he had the experience with the Lord. He had the love of God in his heart. He had a true relationship with God. So although he knew He knew everything about the Lord. He knew that he is the son of God. He is the one who is coming from heaven. He is the bridegroom of the church. And these expressions didn't come from anyone except John the Baptist. And he knew that he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He knew that he is the judge, the just, the just judge in the judgment day and he will separate the evil from the righteous but he was very humble he didn't take pride in his knowledge he, he was always putting himself under the feet of people to serve them to teach them to urge them, them to repent and to take the advantage of the forgiveness of sins that God grants to the repentant people. So, he was not only the most knowledgeable one in his generation, but also he had the true spiritual relationship with God. To feel God in our hearts or to see him in our lives, we should have a humble heart. We can't see God without this humble heart. God gives grace to the humble. And God shows himself to the humble people. St. John denied himself. So God increased in his life. He said about the Lord, he must increase and I must decrease. No one of us wants to decrease. All of us want to grow, to increase, to be greater, to be great more and more. But St. John understood how, how can the man be great is to obtain the glory of God in his life. So he must increase in my life and I must decrease. I must deny myself to let the Holy Spirit work in me, to let the glory of God increase in me. So, as much as we humble ourselves, we get grace from God and we increase in the grace and God increases in ourselves, in our lives, and His glory increases. We celebrate today 
St. Mary's Feast. This is the major feast of St. Mary's, 21st October, and because of this day, we celebrate every month, every Coptic month, in the 21st day of every Coptic month, we, we commemorate St. Mary's. She was the, the most humble person on earth, although she was the second heaven, the son of righteousness shown, has shown for us through her. She was the second heaven. She was the throne of God. She was very, very humble, true servant. She, she almost didn't talk few words, maybe few words. She was most of the time silent, thinking, praising God, thinking about his work. Letting the Holy Spirit work in her. She was very humble. And God, behold this humility of St. Mary. And has chosen her to be her mother. And to be the, the spiritual table, as we say in the, in the Tasbaha. The spiritual table who gives food who gives life to each one who eats from it. Also Saint John the Baptist is a great example of humility. What is humility? Humility to, this is a true feeling inside the heart that I am below the, the whole creation. I am just earthly as we heard St. John saying now, I'm just from earth, I'm just earthly. True humility means that I feel I'm not above anyone. I, I am under anyone. I'm, I'm just an earthly vessel and God honored me with his treasures, with his Holy Spirit, with the talents, with health, with Everything, every good thing is from him. Every bad thing is from me. Every good thing is from him. This is humility. So the humble people are very strong, very strong because they have God in their life. God is filling their life. They are very strong, although they seem that they are poor, they are weak, they are meek. They are uh, enduring some unjust injustice. No, they are very strong because, because they trust in God. God is their strength. Also, the humble people can flee from all the snares of Satan. Without humility, we will stumble. We will stumble. Saint Anthony saw one time the snares of the devil all over the earth. So he was very sad and cried to the Lord saying, O oh Lord, who, who can be saved from all these snares? Then he heard a voice saying, the humble people will flee from this, will be saved from these snares. Also, the, 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 the humble people shows, show uh, the image of God in their life. Because God is increasing in them, and His glory is increasing, so they show the light of God and the, the image of God. One time, St. Bachomius, you know, the father of the communion life, of, of the monastic life, St. Bachomius, God appeared to him many times. So once some of, their, of his disciples were sitting with him, they asked him, please, Father, tell us about one of the visions, the beautiful visions, spiritual visions you have seen. His answer was, a sinner like me doesn't see visions. 
But if you are seeking a beautiful scene, a beautiful vision, just look for a humble and pure person. And don't seek any image or vision except than that. Because the humble and the pure person, through him you will see the face of God and the image of God or the unseen God. You will see the image of God in this person. So the humble people reflects the image of God. How can we acquire humility? Just three points I can conclude with them. This is a main virtue. Without it, there is no salvation, there is no grace, there is no true relationship with God. Number one, we can acquire humility through the, the exercise of obedience. To be obedient to the commandments, to the father of confession, to the parents or the, or the spiritual leaders, the teaching of the church, to be obedient in our daily life, to serve each other. Obedience is not an, an easy thing. <coughs> it is not an easy, an easy thing because I'm denying my will. I am fulfilling the will of other people. It is not an easy. But we can grow in this. And this will help us to be more humble. Number two, we can get humility by enduring afflictions, by being patient and thankful during the hardships, accepting everything from God. This will help us to be more humble and to be accordingly full of grace. Number three, we can get or acquire humility by asking God, by praying, asking Him to fill our hearts with the spirit of humility. It is a gift. It is a gift from God. It is not an easy. Many years ago, I wrote a letter from Pope Kirillus when he was a monk. He was pleading and, and praying fervently that may God fill his heart with the spirit of humility. And he was saying to the one who was sending the letter to, to him, he, he said, this is the greatest virtue. This is the greatest gift. Ask with me, for yourself and for me, that may God grant us the spirit of humility. The spirit of humility. We have to keep asking God for the spirit of humility. Praying. And when we pray, God will give us. And when God will give us that spirit of humility, we, we will pray more because we will feel that we are an, in, disabled. We are nothing. We need more grace. We will trust in God more and more. And we will get more spirit of humility. And so on. We will grow in humility. God will increase. And His glory will increase in, in our lives. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Amen.